Species interactions are, uh, I guess the most common example would be um, cow eating grass. So basically we're talking about consumer resource interactions. There are others as well like uh, when things cooperate and uh, uh, um, a good example would be um, two uh, corals. Corals have uh, endosymbionts that cooperate with them and also competition. So things compete with each other for shared resources for example. For the most part the, the interactions that I'll be talking about and the things that most people are studying are consumer resource interactions it includes predator prey. Uh, disease dynamics are also driven by interactions where vectors and uh, the pathogens interact with each other and with humans for example in the case of human diseases. So um, if you ask the normal man or the normal woman uh, how much of life is made of mammals and birds, uh, uh, the usual answer is you people think that there are a lot of mammals and birds around and it's true. But if you look at it objectively in terms of how many species there are or how much biomass mammals and birds occupy and they are both endotherms, they don't depend on the external temperature, um, they make up 0 0.01 or less percent of life and function on earth. So that means that more than 99 percent of life and function on earth is driven, is directly dependent on the external temperature. This includes microbes, it includes lizards. Um, includes fish and phytoplankton in the sea, um, corals, you name it. So what temperature does is that with these interactions uh, by, by how it affects species is that this 99.99 percent of life on earth depends on external environment for temperature. So when um, the, the climatic uh, temperature warms up their metabolic rates go up and they go up exponentially. And this is something that we are increasingly finding out is a very general pattern and this has been so my recent work has been establishing that this is a very general pattern. And they go up exponentially because uh, biochemical reactions and enzyme reactions, enzyme mediated reactions go up exponentially. So essentially they are constrained by the biochemistry of uh, temperature effects. So in a nutshell then the effect of temperature on consumer resource interactions and interaction in general is going to be exponential. You expect things to go up pretty rapidly up to a point beyond which biological functions start to come down again. Yeah and so jury is still out on how exactly that will happen. We do know that uh, uh, the, the pace of life in general metabolic rates will go up exponentially like I said. Um, but uh, what effect what what an, what effect warming has at the level of individuals is not necessarily an indication of what it'll do at the level of the whole, whole ecosystem because they are compensatory dynamics. One thing goes up, another thing comes down. So we don't know uh, yet uh, with great surety as to what exactly will happen. We do know that some the, we do have some evidence of things uh, shifting ranges and some things uh, starting to decline or increase in density as a function of temperature in experiments as well as in the field. And um, and one thing I want to point out is that uh, having said that endotherms are a mi minority, they do often occupy very important uh, roles like blue whales or, or uh, apex predators in terrestrial ecosystems uh, are a major source of mortality to the lower trophic level. Um, but in general most endotherms are at most two or three links removed from the next ectotherm that is responding to temperature. There has uh, people have been looking for this. In one sentence, I would say the jury is still out. Um, there was have been some papers, uh, mostly controversial, say, suggesting there'll be sweeping extinctions with warming. Uh, but like I said, for some of the reasons that I've already explained, uh, temperature will increase the pace of life, but its influence on extinction rates uh, we are still thinking about and experimentally and theoretically is trying to work this out. Um, there are some things that we know will happen. Um, for example, we know that the direct uh, one in indirect effect of temperature change is that um, uh, things uh, if they can't acclimate, if they can't change where what their optimal temperature is, uh, they need to move, they need to move in space. Sometimes a resource of a consumer will move in space and the consumer has to follow. So basically it is a question of how fast interactions might be able to move in space and if they do not move in space whether they can acclimate in place.
if we can address this question then we can begin to predict whether some this will increase extinction rates in certain types of interactions or not. Um, but overall no we do not we cannot say with great confidence yet that warming will um, uh, will have will cause a change in extinction rate. Uh, there are there is some uh, in there are some interesting insights that we are beginning to get. For example, uh, in tropical environments um, let us say tropical lizards uh, uh, organisms ectotherms live closer to their optimal temperature. All of life one thing I did not mention before is that there is an upper limit to how warm an organism can, can, can bear to live in. Uh, there are extremophiles like bacteria like you know things in, in deep th deep sea uh, vent. But uh, other than those examples most organisms have a fine have a, have a strong upper limit of optimal performance. Most tropical organisms live closer to that optimum. So, one argument has been by people like Ray Huey is that when you warm this up uh, when you warm up even by a few degrees Celsius in a tropical environment those environments are more entail uh, greater might entail have greater extinction risks uh, in response to temperature than to temperate ones. Though we like to think of temperate areas as being the ones where the warming will have the most effect because they are cold and they are going to become warmer. So, there are these interesting possibilities though again we do not know for sure which way it will go. So, when we talk about the effect of temperature interactions one example that is actually has direct implications for, for human society is, uh, is uh, disease and diseases um, a large number a large proportion of them are, are driven by interactions that happen in the wild. So, to, to so specifically basically uh, vector bone diseases for example are uh, driven by uh, mostly by vectors uh, like mosquitoes in the case of malaria that carry parasites that are also ectotherms. So, this ectotherm ectotherm interaction in the field uh, have a huge influence on the rate at which the disease will be transmitted uh, to humans and between humans. And um, uh, some recent work that I have done with uh, collaborators in the US and elsewhere shows that in the case of malaria for example, where the vector is mosquito and the parasite is depending on which malaria it is a different species of plasmodium. Um, uh, the, the, the way the plasmodium responds to temperature and the way the mosquito responds to temperature and how much they matched each other has a huge inf impact on what the optimum temperature of malaria transmission will be. So, previous estimates suggested that uh, warmer will always be better, uh, but in this recent work that we published last year. Uh, two years ago actually now uh, shows that uh, actually the optimum temperature may be cooler than people think simply because uh, if you keep warming things uh, like I said before uh, thermal performance goes down metabolic rates start to decrease at very high temperatures. So, the organisms tend to live at a cooler temperature than what would the optimum would be. I guess at the heart of all this is, is that then that, that we need to understand the mechanisms by which this thing is going to happen. So, no matter how many whole system warming experiments we do, we can never warm them at the same speed that they will actually warm during global warming. So, you cannot do an experiment where you warm up a system by 3 degrees Celsius over 100 years which is like which is one of the scenarios that, that might, might take place uh, the more conservative scenarios. So, but what you can do is that you can understand the mechanics of how this works and then we can build predictive models for what will happen that are more accurate. Um, so, yeah, so malaria is a great example to test this out and where it is important to do that.